We're back, SFA News Live. Now, this morning's panel was fabulous. I told you about it. It's all about food disruptors for people who are changing the face of food. Pradeep is one of them. Don't forget, hashtag Food Innovation Nation. This is a movement. This is not, you know, a food expo where it just has a bunch of different exhibitors trying to sell their cookies and crackers and cheese and stuff like that. You go around this show and people are concerned about the environment. There's certainly a major concern about food hunger, as we just heard. It's about women corporations. It's about B corporations. It's really about being able to bring this to an entirely new level. And Farmstead is doing that. So, Pradeep, tell us about Farmstead, why this is important, and, and how people should pay attention to what you're doing. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Farmstead is a new AI-powered digital grocer. We bring locally sourced, high quality groceries right to your doorstep in under 60 minutes. So I just want to emphasize that, under 60 minutes. I remember the days when Amazon started right. and I was so excited right. that I could buy a book and it would be delivered to me in a week. Right. Then I was excited when it went to two days, then one day, now four hours, right. and you're telling me you can deliver me fresh food in 60 minutes or less. You can build a $150 order and get it to your doorstep in, on average, about 35 minutes in San Francisco. So, okay, and, and you're just right now in San Francisco. You have plan, plans to expand. We're in the Bay Area, so we're live okay. San Francisco to San Jose, most parts of East Bay and South Bay. And we need you to come to Los Angeles so I can be yeah. a customer. Of course. Okay. Um, so, I guess the, the dumb question uh, is, how do you do it? I mean, I, you know, I, I can envision, especially in San Francisco, which is a very busy city mm -hmm. with lots of traffic lights, mm -hmm. with lots of congestion and, and small streets. Mm -hmm. How do you figure this out? Well, we'll walk through everything that happens. So first, we've got to get the food into our micro hub. So our micro hubs are not a traditional supermarket. They are and you said hubs. Feet. Hubs. They are not warehouses. So how many hubs do you have? We have two hubs. There's one okay. in San Francisco in the Mission. There's another one in San Mateo. Okay. They are about 2,000 square feet. We don't so carry, they're not that big? They're not that big, right. and that's intentional. Okay. We don't carry 40,000 items like your traditional supermarket. We carry 1,000 of just the best in every single category. So you're really, and, and a lot of the retailers that we've had on have talked about, you're really curating those offerings for your customers. Very aggressively. And our job is to pick the best in every category so our customers don't have to worry about whether one thing is better than the other. So you might only have one butter, for example. Yeah. We have two butters. Okay. <laughs> and we have three kinds of potato chips, not okay. 40 kinds of potato chips. Right. But they are the best in the category for that particular region that we found. Okay. We have a bias towards local. So whenever possible, we buy local and seasonal. Our produce comes typically from Bay Area sources. If it's, of course, in the winter, you need produce and it comes from another country, that's the best we can get, and right. we are transparent about that. So then we have software that orchestrates the entire experience from that moment. So our buying is fully automated. It's not actually done by a person. And when we're day. talking about buying, we're not talking about a customer buying from you, it's you buying from- Buying from, from our vendors. Your vendors, okay. So we work with a lot of different vendors, but we have AI-powered code that tells us exactly what to buy and how much of it to buy to meet our customer demand while not wasting so much. So traditional supermarkets, on, a, on average, 35 to 40% perishable food waste. That's appalling and somewhat offensive yes. as technologists to us. Yes. So for us, we care a lot about using technology to reduce how much we even have on stock so we don't waste too much in the long run. So when a traditional supermarket tells you, well, we have this donation program that gets all of this food out the door, <laughs> and donate it, I mean, right. that's fantastic. It's great that the food is getting routed properly. But you shouldn't have the waste in the first <laughs> right, place. Exactly, right? exactly. So that's what right. we try to do as much as possible. And once it's in the micro hub, we have software that orchestrates all aspects of picking and packing. So we can pack this $100 order di directly to, uh, in about five minutes. Wow. And in parallel, a driver is dispatched to our hub and a driver shows up and immediately they're handed the bag. 30 minutes later, you're it's at your door and it's perfect. So, that sounds fabulous, and you need to come to LA. Okay, yeah. number one. Um, when you come to the Fancy Food Show, mm -hmm. and obviously you're looking for the best ever, and you're trying to curate and so on, what do you look for, number one, to mm -hmm. pick You know, one of a thousand products? Mm -hmm. And number two, what have you seen so far on the show floor that you said, 
Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that to Farmstead. So recently we've been spending a lot of time thinking about plant-based food. Uh, that's one of our primary focus here at the Fancy Food Show. When we're looking at categories, you know, this is not a skew expansion play. We don't wind up carrying 40,000 items like right. a typical supermarket. So we have to be careful about which items per category we are adding. So whenever we're thinking about how do we increase basket size at Farmstead, that's typically around how do we increase the number of categories, not the number of SKUs. So we are looking for new and unique new product categories that we can offer to our customers. And of course, it is retail, irrespective yep. of whether it's a brick and mortar retail yep, or yep. online. So novelty is interesting, but so is following the trends. So for you, number one trend is plant-based, what you're At seeing At the moment, here. yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, and, and we've heard that a lot from yeah. a, a lot of retailers um, over the past couple days. Um, so what is, um, you know, as, as someone who has a purview of what's going on in the food world and, and being a disruptor of, of what that is, what does the Specialty Food Association, what does the Fancy Food Show mean for you? Well, for us, it's for a Farmstead. for Farmstead yeah. specifically. It's a great opportunity to see what is happening locally, nationally, and internationally. Right in terms of what are the products that are coming to market. How do we wind up? Um, as we're thinking through expansion, how do we kind of map out the lay of the land in every one of these markets? Because if you are a producer in LA and you're coming to LA, we will buy a steward's LA production. Right? right. If you're selling potato chips that are kettle cooked and you know in small batches in Los Angeles, we we want to talk to you. <laughs> Gotcha. Right. Um, Same in the Bay Area. So, so um, without revealing something that you might not want to reveal, how many customers are you now serving in the Bay Area? We're doing thousands of deliveries a, day, uh, a week in the Bay Area. Okay. And that's, we also and have you've been doing this two years now? Uh, about a year and a half or about so. About a year and a half, yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, we, of course, have partnerships with uh, Postmates and mm -hmm. Uber Eats, where our storefront is listed on their platforms. So in addition to Farmstead's uh, website and mobile app, we wind up also. So I could have Uber Eats deliver it to yeah. me. Yeah, it's also possible. Okay. And our job is to get distribution for these amazing brands that we see here at the Fancy Food Show. Well, it's terrific. And um, you know, besides plant-based, give me one more hint of what I'm going to see on Farmstead soon. Well, we've been spending a little bit of time thinking about uh, it's still plant-based, but uh, not just regular meat, but plant-based meat. Right. Like Beyond Meat, Beyond you know, Meat's Ethan, the, who is on your yeah, panel, he'll, panel, he'll be here in a little while talking about that. That's correct. We yeah. are quite excited about that. Yeah, and I've been, I've been to uh, Ethan and Beyond Meat's uh, facility in, yeah. in Southern California, and what he's doing is great. Right. And I don't know if he told the story, because I had to run down here, uh, but, you know, um, it, it's a real interesting background. His parents mm. are environmental professors. Mm. They, they are concerned, they teach about the environment, and his grandfather had a dairy farm. So he right. grew up in the summers and on vacations going to his grandfather's dairy farm with cows right. and his parents' environmental, and he's smack in the middle changing right. both. Right, so yeah, it's that's pretty interesting. Story. We're, uh, my background's actually, my parents are both veterinarians. It's pretty, ah, pretty okay. close, so I spent a lot of time wandering sure. around with them as they were in India going yeah, through yeah. this. But uh, Farmstead actually started after my daughter turned two, and we realized that she started drinking a lot of milk, and I wound up having to go to the supermarket three, four times a week buying the same things over right. and over and over. Right. And as an engineer, it's extremely frustrating to do the same thing over and over and Very over. Very inefficient. Extremely yep. inefficient. Yep. And then we figured, well, let's ask more people and see who's interested in a, just a milkman service. And that's how we started. In two days, we had 200 people sign up. Wow. And immediately after that, we started adding more and more produce and figuring out deliveries, delivery regions. See, I'm jealous you know, because are. my grandfather's a dairy farmer and my father used to deliver milk on, on the milk trucks. So why didn't my dad think of this, right? <laughs> Well, well, Pradeep, thanks so much for what you're doing. You so it's great. You are certainly one of our, our leading food disruptors. Keep up the good work and get to Santa Monica. We need you in Santa Monica. See you soon. Thank okay. you so much. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more on SFA News Live. <laughs>